This incredible place is Raysbury. It's one of the most iconic angling locations anywhere in the UK. It's also famous the world over as a carp fishing destination, fished by anglers who want to push themselves to the very limit in pursuit of the biggest fish of all. Now for decades, it's pushed innovations and always forced things that are new. And that's why we're here this weekend. But for a change, it's not for a carp fishing event. Instead, welcome to the first ever London International Kayak Festival. So this is what we're talking about. Now, if you thought kayak fishing was just somebody sitting in a canoe with a fishing rod, let me tell you, things have moved on. This is the kind of thing that we're gonna be seeing this weekend. This is a very advanced piece of kit and it's full of boys' toys. Ian, this is your boat. Yep. You're gonna give us a little tour around. Thank oh, you yeah. very much for yeah. that. Just explain to us what we're looking at here. So what you're looking at here is a purpose-built fishing kayak, okay? So we've got lots of mods that are specifically for kayak fishermen. So uh, if I give you a, a quick tour from the front, we've got a, a nice hatch here. We can put all our gear in, really nice bit of space. We've got loads of big boys toys. So we've got cameras, <laughs> we've got GoPros, we've got fish finders. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this kayak is uh, you know, we've, we've got a paddle, but paddles are so yesterday, right? So, so now we've got a new propulsion system that's powered by your feet, okay? So it's pedal powered. And when you push that forwards and backwards, you'll go quicker with this thing than you could ever go with a paddle. The other thing I like about this, look, forward and reverse. Yeah, So you absolutely. can go forwards as well as backwards. Yeah, yeah, it's really handy. Especially if you... Uh, if you get a monster fish that tries to pull you into snags and, and underwater structure, you can hit reverse and, and pull back out. I'm instantly taken by the amount of stuff you've got. I mean, we're anglers, <laughs> aren't we? So yes. you know the amount of stuff you take with you and probably a bit too much. Yeah. Really comfortable seat by the look oh, of it. The, the seat, well, one thing about the fishing is obviously you're, you're sat in the, the kayak for long periods. So you want a seat that's as comfortable as possible. We try and keep the center of gravity quite low so you can see it set quite low in the kayak. So that aids with the stability. Uh, we've got space in the back. We've got uh, crates here that we put in the back and we put all our, our tackle and our lures in. Far too many, obviously. Oh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. And you can't help it. You can never have too many lures. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, rod holders here. Um, we've got uh, a rudder. So we, we deploy that and then, I don't know if you can see here, but effectively that's your steering here. So you've got left and right. So many of these boats have been sold worldwide. I mean, yeah. I understand that we're now talking about a quarter of a million yeah. of these are on the water yeah, um, all over the globe. In Europe, it's really taken off, yeah, it particularly in Central Europe. And in the UK, we're starting to see more and more people wanting to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, the, the fact that, that you're mobile, you can get to places that the boat fishermen can't get to. You can get to places that the bank fishermen can't get to. It's stealthy, it's quiet. You can get close to the fish without them seeing you uh, and it's a great load of fun as well with your big boys toys what, what's not to like it's a little jack pike but they all count hey <laughs> well done, Mr. Harris. so Raf, just tell us how this event came about why you decided to hold it here at Rosebury. So I've always been a big fan of predator fishing. I think it's very different to many types of angling. I think being on the water, being mobile, being able to hunt the fish adds a whole new dynamic to the sport. And I'm a massive believer in the future of, of predator fishing. I mean, especially from kayaks, you look at a water like this and there's loads of this lake. It looks stunning, but there are lots of it that you couldn't get to from the bank. Exactly, and that's why these kayaks change the game because you know, people like their pike angling, they walk around, they're throwing it off the bank and you're walking you know, for hours on end, so to speak. Here, within a couple of minutes, you can be in every nook and cranny of the whole lake and, and, and hopefully find that fish, you know? 
we've got 75 of some of the best kayak anglers in the world who've come here, people from 13 countries. You know, you must be very excited to see the event take off like this. I'm excited for that, but at the same time, it's quite unknown here as well. The number of fish in here, the size of fish in here. In an ideal case scenario, what are you hoping to see from this weekend? We've got two days of competition ahead of us. Two days ahead of us, number one, enjoyment, happiness. You know, I want to see everyone enjoy themselves, be happy and, and have a good time, number one. Number two, let's get some fish out. After a hard day of practice, the anglers gather for a pre-match briefing, where the rules of the competition are explained. The match takes place over two days on two of the lakes on the famous Raysbury complex. The field of 70 are split in half. 35 fish the first day on Raysbury 1, while the rest fish on Raysbury's Lake 2. They swap locations on the second day. This is a lure-only event where target species are pike and perch. Every angler tries to catch three of each. The fish are measured in centimetres and then returned. The total length of all fish caught is added together to decide who the winner is. Anglers have made the trip here from all over the world. Kayak fishing is a massive sport in America and Asia. As well as kayak fishing experts from all over Europe and the States, three anglers have made it from China to compete. It's great to see a competition like this in the UK, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. In these, um, we do have a lot of competitions, but not as big as this or as prestigious, to be fair. Yeah, I've come from Northumberland and I've come for this weekend um, Predator competition. Really looking forward to it. I think it's an absolute privilege to be able to fish these lakes. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that on a normal day. So I'm just happy to be here and hopefully we'll catch some fish. You've come a long way, Bob. Yes, I have, and it's well worth it. Why have you come? Well, partly because, uh, well, mostly because of Ian Harris and, and uh, having met so many of these kayak fishermen from around the world. You know, I've met uh, Many of them in China at the, at the World's Championship two years ago. One of the things I'm sensing from this whole event is this is a growing sport. You've been around, you've been fishing a few years. What have you seen, how have you seen it grow the last sort of decade? I, I started kayak fishing in 2008. And once I started, uh, just, just the, the advantages I had as a fisherman, being able to literally walk up or pedal up to the, the fish, and just to admire their beauty while I presented the proper cast. It was just um, unlike any other, any other particular style of fishing. You fished the UK competition scene for lures and you've been one of the sort of the people that's been in there from the start actually. What's it like to see a kayak competition emerge? It's brilliant, it's brilliant and it's great fun. I'm, I'm a complete kayak novice but anybody can get in these boats, anybody can have a go and it's easy. As long as you don't fall in or tip it over, you're all right. What about the venue? Venue's ace. Oh, it's stunning. It'll be interesting to see how you get on today. Is it pike all out, do you think? Um, well, you need three pike, three perch, I would have thought, but perch are going to be a bit hard to come by. I've not seen it, well, I've not heard of any being caught in the last day's practice, so it'll be interesting to see what comes out. The other question, of course, is you look around. I mean, there are people from 13 different nations here. There are 75 people across two lakes. Being involved in a competition of that size must get the old ticker going. Uh, yeah, it does. There's, there's obviously some quality anglers here from across the globe. So, it's um, yeah, it's, we're up against it. But it's home waters, so we've um, got to put a bit of effort in, haven't we? So it's 7 o'clock in the morning here at Raysbury and you can see from the amount of activity on the dock here that the 35 anglers on Raysbury 1 are away. The event has started, um, there are anglers heading left, right, straight on. Um, they've been practicing for a couple of days here and the chances are that one or two of them know the best spots. Now one of the most interesting elements to this sort of event is the amount of work you have to do to get to the fishing spot that you want to fish first. Because I tell you this for nothing, there won't be very many secrets. This is a fabulous lake, but what we saw in practice was that the fishing was quite hard. So if there are any spots that are likely to produce a fish early on, there'll be a few people trying to get them. Now the event takes place, the actual match today is over two lakes. This is Raysbury 1, the lake we're looking at now. Um, there's also 35 other competitors on Raysbury 2. 
The fishing takes place from seven o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon. And the idea behind that is that we're hoping that the predators feed early. Uh, the forecast today, you can already see there's some wispy cloud, there's some blue sky coming, a little bit of rain this morning, but the forecast is for it to get brighter and warmer later. And bright conditions and warm sunshine do not equal fantastic predator fishing. So hopefully one or two of these guys are going to get involved in some fish early on. The planes have already started from Heathrow Airport, so uh, we'll see how we go. Well, Steve, we're already out on the water. Um, the slightly disturbing thing for the angler's perspective is we're sort of 15 minutes into the match and the sun's already up and high. That's not going to help with the predator fishing, is it? Well, yesterday when we had the uh, practice day, things were slow. I mean, I, I've been here a couple of times before and I've always caught fish. And actually, midsummer, sunny day, uh, equally. So um, I'm not saying, um, I wouldn't say this is uh, definitely going to be a problem. Um, but judging by yesterday, who knows, it could be hard. We're just up behind one of the, the Chinese anglers who's found himself a lovely little spot inside a fallen tree. Um, this venue is extraordinary and it's such a natural kind of environment in a, such an unnatural place. Yeah, considering the proximity to uh, the airport and uh, the big population centres, um, it's an, a little oasis. Um, OK, you hear the aircraft and so on, which remind you uh, where we are, but uh, other than that, it's, it's a beautiful little haven. So there's another one of our international competitors, Steve. That's Bob Newweiler, who's come all the way from New Jersey to fish Raysbury. Um, I mean, to all intents and purposes, Bob could be fishing for bass in a kind of a... in the glades or something, couldn't he? Look at it. Yeah, I mean, this, this uh, image you see here, um, this is very typical of these guys, you know, getting in close in amongst all the uh, structures, the submerged roots, and it, what amazes me is the accuracy. They can ping a lure and they can just land it exactly where they want. They rarely tangle, you know, I mean, he's got it right in there, right just by the trees and the branches, and uh, it's the accuracy of the casting which is uh, impressive. Well, this is interesting, Steve. We're just looking at A.D. Peacock, and clearly he's fly fishing for the pike, but actually... It doesn't look like he's got fluff on the end, it's something else. No, it looks like he's got a, uh, a soft lure, soft plastic lure there, and it's, it's, it's dropping onto the surface, and then looks to me like he's fishing it just under the surface, which is probably why he's decided to use the fly rod. And so maybe he can just change out and get a, get a fly on if he fancies it, and without having to change rig. Well, Steve, we're in Dredger Bay, very famous location at Raysbury, famous for carp angling in this area because uh, a sunken dredger that was used to extract some of the gravel from the original diggings of the, the lake is uh, still here. And there's Paul Monaghan, who is another angler who's decided on fly tactics. Again, it looks like he's using something a little bit more um, traditional rather than a soft plastic on the end of a fly line. All of these anglers are competing for a prize money simply can't buy. If they win, they gain automatic selection to fish for Team Europe in the Hobie World Championships later this year. But using traditional methods or otherwise, fish were hard to find on Raysbury 1. It was a very different story on the other lake. By the time the event was two hours in, there'd been more than a dozen fish caught. So news is reaching us that there has been a decent pike caught over on Raysbury 2 by the Swedish angler Lars Lundberg and his fish measured 79 centimetres, so that's down here. This is the kind of official fish measure that's being used in the competition, and each centimetre of fish measures goes towards their cumulative total. Three pike are needed, three perch, to get you a full house. Several anglers were heading for their maximum total of three pike, Lars among them. After his early fish, he was in again, and this time the pike was big enough to be measured by the marshals. This pike measured 84 centimetres. Lars, the angler they call the crazy Viking, was heading into an early lead. Back on Raysbury 1 and Pip Medhurst had found a method that seemed to be working. Well, Steve, there's one of the England contingent, that's Pip Medhurst, who we understand has had a fish this morning, a 75 centimetre pike, which is a massive confidence boost because we haven't heard about a lot else being caught on Raysbury 1 yet. No, that's a great start for uh, for Pip, and it's interesting how he's got a fish spot on the maximum uh, uh, length for the measure. If, if it had been a slightly bigger fish, we'd have been called over to uh, to measure it out on the larger uh, scale. So it's a shame in some ways we didn't get the call, but um, uh, a 75 is a, a good start, and considering there's not a lot of other action on other parts of the lake at the moment, uh, that's, a, that's a great start for Pip. 
Kayak fishing is a sport which has attracted a new young crowd too. But perhaps the next person to catch on Raysbury 1 was a bit of a surprise. Well, Steve, we've moved back round to the boat bay and here's MD Jacobs, one of the young anglers taking part in today's competition, 11 years old from Northampton, and he has caught a pike. Yeah, this is only the second fish out, I believe, uh, this morning, and uh, there it is. Look at that. Well done, MD. Great job. Do you know, the, the thing that's amazing about this place is look at the colours on that fish. I mean, that's the, the joy of fishing at Raysbury, the, the kind of the clear water you get these incredible golds and greens on the pike and the perch too. Well, that fish measures 84 centimetres. Big smile on face, happy angler, happy dad. Everyone's happy, fantastic stuff. Really, what a privilege to see. Brilliant stuff. Back to Raysbury 2 now, where the crazy Viking had hooked into another pike. that it doesn't always go according to plan, but elsewhere on the lake. We're still on Raysbury 2, and there is David Morris. A punch in the air. And you'll see why in a second, because look at the size of the pike in his landing net. That is an enormous fish from Raysbury 2. That's what this event's all about. I mean, we've seen an 11-year-old over on Raysbury 1 catching potentially the biggest fish of the day. There have been at least half a dozen or so fish here on 2. Oh, my Lord, look at the size of this fish. Well, Ian Harris is going to measure it. That's an enormous Raysbury pike, and that's gone well over a metre. 107. We're going to give that 107, a metre and seven centimetres, just to double check. So we take a photograph very quickly, bright sunshine, so we're going to be very aware that this fish needs to go back in the water as fast as possible. Isn't that an incredible looking creature though? And it's lovely that everybody's here to see this. A real achievement. So David, talk us through the capture, what happened? Well I've just uh, been casting my uh, western swim bait around, I had a fish earlier today on the same bait. And uh, yeah, just bang, I felt something hit, and then it was a bigger, it, it swallowed the whole, whole lure, and then a very quick, short fight, getting it straight into the net as quickly as possible. Amazing to see a fish that size fight so quickly, landed so quickly. Yeah, that's a PB for me, so I'm, I'm over the moon. It was, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get it in the net, to be honest. There's so many fish being lost today, some good fish, that it was just important for me to get it. What sort of water were you fishing in? Um, I think, I don't know, it's about 12 feet, I think. Something around 12 feet, so. It's what I'd normally do for, for pike fishing. What, into open water or into the, into the cover? I was in from open water into the cover, closer, casting very close into cover. As the first day drew to a close, it was clear the anglers who'd fished on Raysbury 2 had enjoyed better sport than those on the other lake. Just three pike had been landed on one, compared with 40 on Raysbury 2. That pike, fooled by Great Britain International David Morris, was the biggest of the day. So as the anglers headed for the clubhouse, dreaming of the chance of competing in the biggest kayak event in the world, it was Lars Lundberg who was in pole position. He eventually had a third fish and led with 234 centimetres. Graham Bustill was second, Eddie Edwards third on 202. Incredibly, the top 13 anglers of the 75 fishing all came from Raysbury 2. 11-year-old MD Jacobs led the pack from one with his 84 centimetre Raysbury crocodile. The biggest mystery of all though was where had all the perch gone? Not a single measurable stripey was landed. Perhaps they'd all appear on the second day.
So here we are then on the morning of the second day of the London Kayak Festival here at Raysbury. Now today it's a very different day indeed because look at the weather. It's overcast, it's drizzly. Yesterday, bright sunshine, 22 degrees, it was a glorious summer's day. Now those conditions are not ideal for predator fishing, but guess what? This weather is absolutely perfect and that could be a huge, huge game changer. So Lars, you're leading overnight. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm actually quite relaxed. Um, yesterday you had a good day on W2. Mm -hmm. um, today on W1 it's going to be a very different match, isn't it? Well, we'll see when we get out there. I'm oh, pretty excited. Um, conditions are a bit better today. A bit of overcast cloud and we might fish a bit better. It was hard fishing yesterday, but it was it's a pretty good place. Lovely. So Reese, three fish yesterday has put you yes. right in the running. How are you feeling this morning? I'm nervous uh, on a lake that's not caught very well over the last uh, the last couple of days. So we'll give it our best. But light conditions are better, um, and it's looking more optimistic out there. So we'll give it a good go. Listen, you've got a big match to fish for today, and you're right up there on the leaderboard. I mean, yeah. how are you how are you feeling about the the competition that you're going to face today? Yeah, I'm a little bit worried because the, the 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 weather's much better for today for us, and then um, we've got a problem that the guys on the other lake are going to have a much better time as well. So they you know, there's going to be quite a few threes I think will come out over there. Just hope I can get at least two fish from here. W2 yesterday was one thing. Yes. This lake fished ever so hard and had and did in practice too. I mean, what, what's your sort of impression of how it's going to go? I think the weather conditions are going to be in our favour. So I think an early fish is the way forward. Looking at the conditions, we've had early morning rain. The fish could be active. I just hope that they will be. But uh, I'm using an old-fashioned tactic, which is a copper spoon. Uh, not many people use them these days. It's one that I've had since, say, 1971, and I'm really enjoying it. It caught me three fish, so what can I say? Well, I mean, we are several competitors that have quite close weights, and, and I mean, one pike can make a big change in the leaderboard. So, I mean, uh, we are at least five, six guys within a half a metre, and that's, that's a small pike. So, Makes it a fantastic competition, though, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. That, that's the fun of this. I mean, the, anything can change at any time, and... It's, it's, it's just, it's really just about hard work. You throw your lures, the more time the lure spends in the water, the bigger chances of catching a fish. Kayak, are you ready? Can't hear you. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! So there we are. The second day is underway and look at Lars Lundberg go. He's on a mission, he's leading the event overall and he's gone straight down that left-hand channel at a rate. Interesting to see the configuration of his boat. He's got outriggers on either side which makes the boat more stable. And he's disappearing off, he's not alone of course. And the boat's disappearing to all quarters. It'll be fascinating to see how this lake fishes today because it was really hard work yesterday. So then Ian, the boats are underway. What's your feeling about how this match is going to go today? I think it's going to go down to the wire. So we've got guys in the top 10. Any one of them could win it. It's all to play for. One, one fish from one of those guys could, could catapult them from 10th to 1st. And uh, Raysbury 1's been fishing a bit tougher than Raysbury 2. So I think they won't have it as easy as they had it yesterday. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, here we are then on Raysbury 2, Steve. Um, it's the morning of the second day, and we're with Mike Taylor, who is our first fish that counts on the uh, the boat. We'll get to that in a moment. Yep, uh, that okay. looks like a nice fish. Yeah, there have been some uh, other pike caught, I believe, this morning by one or two anglers, um, around about the 70 mark, 73, 75. This one, obviously, is oversized on the board, so uh, we're going to put him on the big trough to, to measure. But, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good-looking fish, long and, long and slim by the look of that one. Let's talk to us a little bit about the, uh, how can I put this, non-pike capture. What happened there? Yeah, OK, so about uh, 20 minutes ago, uh, we got the call. Amos uh, Paul Mack gave us a wave. We headed over thinking uh, it looks like a big pike on. As we arrived, he's shouting, carp, carp, carp. So, uh, yeah, um, he was fly fishing uh, for, for pike. Um, and uh, today, one of the uh, local carp decided he wanted to make a meal of it, so uh, he came up and took the fly. It's fascinating the way these two lakes are fished. I mean, this is the essence of this competition today. There were 40 fish caught on Raysbury 2 yesterday, and only three pike caught on Raysbury 1. All the anglers obviously have switched places, so those who fished on 1 yesterday have moved over here to 2 and vice versa. How do you see this going today, Steve? 
Well, it's looking good so far. I mean, there, already there are more fish been taken this morning in the first hour, so, um, you know, it's shaping up pretty well. The conditions look a little similar to yesterday, maybe a bit more cloud cover. That may change things slightly, but, um, yeah, it's looking good so far. Now, that's a cracking-looking raised breed, too, Pike. Look at the colours on that. Beautiful looking fish. It was, they looked fantastic. It was real, real tiger stripe effect uh, on the on its back when it was down in the water. Once you get it out the water and get it in the sunshine, there's all the bronze and the gold and the other coloration on the fish. Fantastic, really good condition too. So Mike, fantastic looking fish that. Um, after spending yesterday thrashing the water to a phone with no reward, yeah. what's that like to hook up finally? Oh, big relief, huge relief. Uh, like you say, a lot of effort yesterday. No reward, and then today, new lake, a lot of fish caught yesterday, nothing caught off the other lake, and then starting to think of maybe a bit too much pressure yesterday, and they weren't going to feed today, and then straight away. Can you show us the lure you used, because that one's off yeah. the top, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was a surface lure, it's a bit tangled in the net, but it's called a squirrely bird, heavy rattle in it, and she just fishes either just on the top, if I can get it undone, or just underneath. And I just had it just working slowly across the top. The fish come along, just engulfed it. Heart stopping. <laughs> I tell you that's really interesting, that's a pike pattern, isn't it? I mean, it's, it a, it's, is, a, it's yeah. a jack pike, little tiny pike pattern. Yeah, I went for the uh, natural colour because the water's so clear. Um, I thought maybe the bright colours might be putting them off a bit, so I'll try something natural and it worked. Here's Francois Smith, who is, um, how can we put this, in the wars this morning. He's uh, had, this is the third pike he's landed. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I think the first fish that he caught, um, when you're unhooking pike, occasionally you can get into difficulties. They've got very sharp gill rakers, and Francois has managed to cut his fingers. And the other problem you've got is that um, the pike's gill rakers are covered in an anticoagulant. So basically, when they bite a prey, the prey bleeds to death. But I'm afraid he's um, he's suffering as a result. So we've got another angler approaching us from behind. I mean, the difference between the, uh, the the sport we saw on Raysbury 1 yesterday and here on Raysbury 2, you know, we're actually queuing up, literally, to get fish measured. This is the third fish we've seen this morning. Fantastic stuff. Well, Steve, we're back in the same bay where just a few moments ago we saw two pike, and here's one of the other Chinese anglers just landing another fish. It's clearly an area where the fish are feeding. Well oh, fantastic. <laughs> He's happy. Yeah, this looks like Jack Pike Alley at the moment. They're pulling him out here at, uh, at a pace. And um, I think that may be his first fish, so I think he's, he's really pleased. Well, Steve, there's Bob Neuweiler from New Jersey, who is trying to tap into the attack instincts of the pike by fishing a topwater bait, a fascinating little bait that we just saw him um, show us the bait. And it's a little tiny green popper, which has actually got a almost like a, a plastic vein, but at the other end of the of the bait. So it's actually causing that spray. You can see the, the spray coming up by the tail of the bait. Um, Bob says it's a fantastic bass bait. And of course, pike are predators just like bass, aren't they? Yeah, that little plume coming off the, off the tail of the lure, I guess it's uh, trying to imitate some creature or other, or a little fish or whatever it is, but looking like it's frantically whizzing across the, the top there. And uh, that's got to be attractive to, to a fish. But it is very, uh, not, not, it's not a lure I've seen in the UK before. It looks like a, very much a, a US bass lure to me. And that's one of the wonderful things about this. You know, we've got people from 13 different countries here. who have all got their own ways of fishing in their own countries. And everyone's going to learn from each other too, which is the other bonus of a competition like this. Particularly, you know, some of our uh, Hobie fishing team guys that go over to the uh, Hobie worlds in various parts of, uh, uh, of the world. In, uh, they've had it in Texas, they have it in Australia, they've had it in China. You know, when they go to these places, they come back with a, a, an array of new techniques, uh, different lures they've discovered. Um, and and the, the guys generally are quite happy to share the information. And um, a lot of it's going to cross over. So it's a great learning experience when they, when they do travel like that. There's Phil Medhurst who was one of only three anglers to catch fish on Raysbury 1 yesterday. Um, he's uh, here on Raysbury 2 today and the bad news is that Pip has not yet caught a fish. He's going to be frantic trying to catch something out here. Yeah, and it's an interesting one because I was speaking to Pip uh, early this morning just before we launched and he was talking tactics and uh, one of the things he uh, mentioned was that he felt that possibly the fish would be more likely to um, take lures either near or on the surface. 
and uh, he said that was something he was going to try. Now it doesn't look like he's using that type of lure right now, but certainly uh, the fish we've had out so far, most of the anglers seem to have been doing and catching the fish in the way that Pip predicted, i.e. on the surface or near the surface. Yesterday the guys at the top of the leaderboard, who are now fishing on Raysbury 1, who were on here yesterday, they've had their three fish. The question is whether any of the guys at the top of the leaderboard will be able to catch enough fish on Raysbury 1 and if Pip can get two or three pike on out here, obviously the points he'll get from yesterday will be added to today and then he'll go flying up the leaderboard but he does need to start catching fairly soon. Uh, he does and it's interesting I've just had a phone call with the other Marshall boat on uh, Raysbury 1 and uh, yeah it's producing some fish today so I, whether it will be as prolific as two I don't know but there have certainly been some fish coming up and probably certainly the Marshall boats attended four or five fish that therefore oversized so over the 75 centimetre mark there may be more that are, the, the, the anglers are measuring themselves on their own boards but it certainly seems like Raysbury 1 is starting to turn on. Well, doesn't this just go to show, it doesn't matter where you're fishing, if the fish are there, you can catch them. We're right on the pontoon here, back on Raysbury 1, which is the lake where everyone's struggled so far this competition. And there we can see Ian Harris, who is doing the job of measuring another fabulous Raysbury pike. And this is Ian Pickering, who yesterday caught a fish on Raysbury 2 and so far this morning he's had two pike. So Ian is gonna be right there in the running for this competition. This is gonna be a fascinating <coughs> afternoon. And it's interesting that the fish on Raysbury 1 have started to have a little bit of a feed. Steve, there's Daniel van der Post who was in fifth position overnight. And do you know how close this competition is? Between him and Rhys Morgans, who was one place above him, was one centimetre. Oh. Incredible, isn't it? That's really, really close. I mean, they've, they've all got to keep going right until the end. Daniel's an uh, expert kayak angler from the Netherlands, um, very used to these conditions, catching pike and perch and zander um, in all the waterways of the Netherlands. He's very, very experienced and, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely got a great opportunity to catch a fish. He's got to keep going right to the end. It's, it, it could, it, anything could change any time. Well, Steve, an interesting little bit of tactical jigging here in fact jigging is the right word to use because that in the uh, green boat is Mike Haywood who's 11th overnight on 138 and he's been concentrating on perch fishing and I can bring you exciting news he actually caught two measurable perch the first person that we've seen in the competition who's caught two measurable stripes brilliant stuff well there's Reese Morgan's paddling off to try and find some fresh water to fish in he caught three fish yesterday, but so far today has had nothing. He was on 195 centimetres overnight. And as he disappears round the corner in search of some fresh water, this match is reaching the sharp end. Reese in fourth place overnight, one of the contenders for the title. And there's so much at stake from this match for these guys who are passionate about kayak fishing. Because the winner gets to be selected for the Hobie team to go and fish in the World Championships representing Europe. And imagine that as a huge honour, fishing against the best kayak anglers in the world. Well, Steve, there's our overnight leader, the man that uh, Ian Harris calls the crazy Viking, um, Lars Lundberg, who is working really hard. And one thing I notice about the boat that he's on is it's very different to almost everything else we've seen on the lake. Can you explain what the difference is with that one? Yeah, because Lars um, travelled by aircraft from Sweden, he didn't um, he didn't bring the boat with him, so he's borrowed a boat from one of our Hobie team members, Dave Morris, and this is Dave's uh, uh, chosen model for, for for use on the sea. Um, so it's a long, slender hull. It's 16 feet long, and um, it's very, very fast because of the hull shape. It's a very, very good sea fishing boat, but also equally, it'll work very well on these. Uh, lakes for competition fishing because of the um, the outriggers that they're installed. I'll tell you what Steve, look at him go. I mean what, what sort of speed do you reckon he's doing? Four or five knots easily? Yeah, very, very easily. We've, we've clocked these boats, you know, if you're um, using the, the larger fins, the turbo fins, you can um, uh, kick on and, and that'll push along. He's doing at least five knots there, maybe maybe even a touch more. He's really putting the effort in, to be honest. But he's wanting to get to another spot. He's, he's, he's checked this out. He's decided this is not, it's not happening for him here. And he's, like you say, he's highly competitive. He's going to find another spot and he's going to try and do the same there.
No, he's just lost it. Well, we're just cruising up to Ian Pickering, who's just hooked into a fish, and he's just lost it. Bearing in mind Ian was one of the contenders, you can see what that means to him. He realises that losing that fish could be hugely important. <laughs> Feels like throwing the rod in. It's fishing a spinner by the look of it. You can hear it jangle as a little chatterbait, maybe, something like that, something that makes a bit of noise. Extraordinary stuff. There's another one of our top 10 anglers, Steve. That's Sean Milner, who had two fish yesterday for 162 centimetres in seventh overnight. Um, again, here on Raysbury One, Sean hasn't had a fish, and you can sense the sort of the urgency now is creeping into these guys. They're sort of staying in one spot, fishing it for a few minutes, whizzing off and trying to find something else. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary amount of tension creeping in the interesting thing I found about this yesterday that it was actually quite a relaxed event nice sort of friendly atmosphere and now we're down at the business end you can sort of sense a little bit of tension creeping in I think yeah what I think is interesting is that um, no one has particularly stretched out a massive lead so they've still got it all to play for they're, they're, they don't you know most of them only need one fish to get them right in contention and who knows they get one big one and that pushes them right up into the lead so i think they're all quite aware of that so they're all going to keep going for it i think right till the end oh little hit there he's had a hit then again another, one, yeah. another hit chances keep it up ian come on persevere chances for ian pickering He's just checking his hooks there, Steve. I don't blame him. Yeah, I did, um, when I spoke to him earlier, when he was unhooking the um, pike up by the pontoon, he, he, he did say that uh, he should come clean, cleanly out of the fish's mouth because he's using a barbless uh, hooks. Sick. Yeah. He's in. Well, that's fantastic. What a brilliant thing. What a reward for patience for Ian Pickering. He's drifted through this bay three or four times. He's lost two fish, Steve. And there's his reward. He's gone back. He's found the right bait. He changed his hook. Changed his hook, importantly. He lost one. Yeah, yeah he, he, he didn't lose that again there. He no, he's got it. He's, he's got it in the net. Well done, Ian. Well, that's a brilliant reward. That's a really good bit of angling. That's, uh, that's, that's fantastic. He, he took the time and the effort to change the hook. He, he knew he'd, he'd uh, had the fish spit the hook a few times. He's using a barbless hook, so he just changed it, put a new one on. Nice sharp one. And uh, there he is, struck that one and, and it stuck. Right, let's have a little look. That's a nice fish. A bit of an old warrior. Make sure your tag's visible. So nose goes on there. That's right on the limit there, Ian. So to the tip of his tail, I would say that's exactly 75. Tag, is it on? Yeah, tag is on here. So let's make sure we've got the tag in shot. Do you mind putting your hand on the fish like that? Fine. Let's get a nice shot. You got your number in shot? Yeah. Perfect. Great job. It's a bit of an old warrior, this fish. 75. All right, I'll get it back. Just keep him in the net for a second, let it recover. So that fish measures 75 centimetres and that is Ian's fourth fish of the weekend. His third, most extraordinary, his third from Raysbury One, which has been the toughest lake of all. And I fancy that's going to put him right in the box seat in this competition as we add the measures of all four of those fish together. The match isn't over yet, mind you. He's already found that he's caught two fish from that location. And one thing I want to do is have a sneaky look at the lure he's using. We promise we won't show anybody until after the match because there's still half an hour left. Come on, show us the secret. Yeah, you see, that's an old fashioned looking sort of approach. Spinny tail. Spinny tail. So that's the fella that's been doing the damage and that's the one you had that one on on the, on the pontoon as well, isn't it? All three. All three fish on that same one, isn't that amazing? So after 16 hours of fishing on the two lakes here at Raysbury, the first ever London International Kayak Festival was at an end. 
The competitors were put to the test in bright, sunny and warm conditions that perhaps made their fishing more difficult. But solving the conundrums dealt to anglers by nature is a massive part of what these events are all about. In total, they landed more than 70 fish between them over the two days, proving what an incredible freshwater predator venue Raysbury is. It was time for the presentations. First prize, winning a ticket to the Hobie Worlds. Airfare paid as well, no expense spared. But this is the prize that money can't buy. 300 centimetres, he pulled it out of the bag today. Ian Pickering, where are you, Ian? Well done, mate. That was fantastic. That was so cool. Right, here you go. Don't forget your Western box. We'll do one with them. Here's confirmation then of the final standings in the first London International Kayak Festival. Ian Pickering's incredible comeback on day two saw him lift the title. He came from 14th place to take victory by landing three pike on the second day from Raysbury 1. Lars Lundberg was second. One small jack pike measuring just 67 centimetres would have given him victory. But it wasn't to be as he blanked on the second day. Um, Ian, first of all, many congratulations. Uh, it was interesting when we came around that corner and you were thrashing away trying to get that pike out. What was going through your head at that point? Well, I knew I needed that last pike to be in any chance of winning so um, it was so close to the end um, I was pretty determined to, to, to make sure I got it and it took five or six attempts as you saw so yeah I started off the day um, after yesterday in 14th place and I'm, I got an early fish this morning so that put me uh, I know I had a chance if, if I got a couple of fish so uh, you know I was on two today one yesterday so one more fish would put me in, in, in with a chance and it, and it has um, so uh, the fact that you tried and kind of failed to get that fish a couple of times, I mean, did you think, you know, it wasn't going to happen? Well, yeah, normally you sort of miss a fish and that, that's it, it's gone. It'll go and sulk somewhere in the, under, the, under the weed or something. But uh, I, I persevered and as you saw, I changed my hook because it wasn't hooking up and uh, yeah, I managed to get it. So. so standing in front of all those people in the area and, and, and saying that, you know, those, and calling your name out and saying that you're representing Europe in a world championship event, how are you feeling at this stage? Well, it's exciting really isn't it, I mean don't even know where it's going to be so it could be anywhere in the world so um, yeah I've done a lot of kayak fishing competitions in the UK so uh, it'd be good to go and um, represent everybody abroad so yeah looking forward to it.